So I want to put a disclaimer on the beginning of this video because in this video I talk a lot about um, my own personal struggles with um, sexual abuse, mental abuse, self-harm, um, and I don't want it to be a trigger for anyone who might watch this video. And I know I have family that watches this channel, so I just wanted to put a disclaimer at the beginning that we're going to be getting into some personal stuff here, things you might not be ready to hear. So I just want to have this warning ahead of time so that you don't stumble into something you're not prepared for. Everyone has a story, and although most of my viewers know most of mine, there is a big part that I have never told you guys until now. As a lot of you know, I am the youngest of four and the only girl. I've never been super close to my oldest brother, mainly because of age, but I've always been really close to my other two brothers, especially the youngest, and because of the sensitive nature of the stuff I'm going to talk about, I'm going to refer to him as Ryan from this point on. And he was four years older than me. Ryan was my world. My brother, my best friend, my other half. He used to say we were one soul living in two bodies. But eventually we all grew up and in May of 2009 I decided it was time to spread my wings and move from my hometown of Mitchell, South Dakota to Wyoming. My brother Ryan took this news very hard. He kept saying that I was abandoning him, I didn't love him enough to stay, and at the time I thought it was just him trying to cope with separation, that on some level he was just joking. But it was later I realized he was doing a lot of the same emotional and mental abuse that he'd been doing on me for years that I just didn't recognize at the time because I was just used to it. At first, after I moved, our relationship stayed about the same, but as the months went on, Ryan became more distant, um, blatantly so, to the point where he would just ignore any attempt I made to try and call him or text him or anything, right on his Facebook wall. But as soon as I would say anything, he would apologize and apologize and swear he was there for me and that he loved me and then almost instantly go right back to ignoring me. This went on for a while and things between us got worse and worse till 2011. In 2011 things got really rocky for me. I think at this point my mind stopped protecting my heart from the awful truths that I'd been repressing for so many years. I started having nightmares about Ryan and I I use the word nightmares carefully because I was having dreams that no little sister wants to have about her big brother. Eventually memories started to come while I was awake and it was then that I realized the truth. From the time that I was eight until I was nine, Ryan and I shared a room. And almost every night of that year, Ryan molested me. He called it a game, and I didn't like it, but it made him happy. He said it was just for us, so I couldn't tell anyone. And to my eight, nine-year-old mind, my thought was, this is my big brother. He would never really hurt me, and I just want to make him happy. This lasted a year that we shared the room until I got my own room. Um, but years later now I've had enough come back to me that I know it was going on way before we ever even shared a room. He also cornered me in my room one day when I was 14, which would have made him 18, and he tried to get me to have sex with him. I said no, and I honestly can't, as a meek and willing to make people happy as I was, I can't thank my 14-year-old self enough for for having the courage to tell him no. 
because if I hadn't, I don't know how much longer it would have gone on, how bad it would have gotten. I also know things were going on before we shared a room because I have a very distinct memory of one night stealing a butter knife from our kitchen. And when we were alone in the house, I cornered him in the hallway and I threatened him with a knife and I told him to stay away from me. Obviously that only lasted for so long and my mind made me forget what was going on. In 2011, later 2011, my dark, long, and lonely road began with dreams. I got to the point where I didn't want to sleep at all. I would try everything I could just so I didn't have to sleep. Back then I worked mostly evening shifts, so I would work 1 to 10, and then p.m. and then I would stay up until it was light out and sleep for about three hours and then make myself get back up. About this time was when I had the incident um, that happened to me in my room that one night and I'll leave the link to that video down below. I started taking a pill called Stay Awake um, every two to four hours just to help me get through every day just so that I wouldn't have to sleep and my anorexia started. For about four months or so I only consumed 44 ounces because I used our cups at work of um, blended up fruits, fruits and vegetables because just looking at warm food or regular food made me want to throw up and if I tried to eat I would throw up. Obviously it was stress related. It was all because my mind was so messed up at the time. I just couldn't function right. I can't tell you how much weight I lost. I mean if you look at the pictures it was obviously a healthy weight for me it's just the way I got to that weight was not healthy. By the time 2012 rolled around I had gotten better. I could eat solid foods but not very much. Not maybe a handful of solid food a day. My sleep finally lengthened to a solid five hours <laughs> and my dreams were subsiding a little. But that was only because other things were beginning to happen. Now I was starting to have real memories come to me while I was awake. As a lot of people in this situation wrongly do, I absolutely hated myself. I thought I was dirty and disgusting. I believed I was damaged and dirty. I hated myself so much and the memories I had repressed were coming back so intensely that Finally, on October 14th, 2012, I cut for the first time. It had started months earlier when little memories would come back. I would scratch myself as hard as I could. But on this particular night, that wasn't enough. I still have a scar right here where I scratched myself. I always told people that my cat did it, but I did it. Um, that night a memory came back to me so strong and so intensely I couldn't shut it down, I couldn't shut it out, I couldn't breathe. So I took a blade, a razor blade, and I carved the word dead into my thigh. Because that's how I felt and how I wanted to feel all at the same time. I always cut on my thighs because the very last thing I wanted was for people to find out what was going on. I felt that if anyone found out what was going on, they would feel the same way that I felt, that I was disgusting and that I had done something wrong. So I stopped wearing shorts and nightgowns. I stopped going swimming. Every time a memory would come back, I would carve a word into my thighs. For whatever reason that I can't explain, um, I know I'm pretty sure everyone who cuts has a different thing. Um, carving words into my thighs gave me a better release than just straight lines. I tried those. I know how destructive and terrible cutting is, but when you are in that much pain that you cannot control, it's easier to have a pain you can control to focus on to distract you. That's the 
best way I can explain it. Deep down, I felt like I deserved the pain. I deserved every scar I was left with. And I was always very careful not to cut too deep because I didn't want to risk having to go to the hospital or bleeding through bandages and people finding out. I was lost and dying inside. As far as my heart could tell, this pain and this loneliness was all there was ever going to be. I was alone. It got to a point where I didn't want to be touched at all. <sighs> I couldn't even hug my best friend or my middle brother that I've always been close to. I was never suicidal. Uh, I couldn't do it to my best friend Shayna or my nephews or my viewers. <laughs> and some small part of me always wanted to believe that it was going to get better eventually. Whatever that meant. There were times I know it slipped through in my videos. You inspire me in so many ways, one of them being Harry Potter. You make me love it more than I already do, which I didn't think was possible considering I already love it with everything I have. So thank you for that. And I also thank you for making me feel like I have a place in this world and I'm not the only one. Yeah, that and some other things that happened between us just kind of completely obliterated my ability to trust a lot of people. 22 year old me. I'm sorry, but I tried so hard just to stay happy and positive for those few precious sunbeams in my life. The last time I cut was June 3rd, 2013. I was in a rush because I had to pick up Shayna from work and we were sharing her car at the time. And a really strong memory hit. And I was rushing and I cut too deep. I cut farther than I'd ever had. And I tried everything to stop the bleeding and it wouldn't. So eventually I had to go. So I just had to wrap a ton of toilet paper around it and an ace bandage to keep it all together and pray it wouldn't bleed through or that Shane would go, why is the one side of your pants so bulgy? It was then that I thought to myself, what am I doing? How much longer can I do this? As silly as this next part might sound, <laughs> the Office series finale was the turning point towards my recovery. That's crazy, the little things that save us. The finale of The Office aired on May 26, 2013, but I couldn't bring myself to watch it because I'd been with the show for so long it was one of my it was my favorite show on television but finally on June 5th 2013 I sat down and watched it I'm mean, already crying pretty hard over nostalgia and ending one of Pam's final segments broke me completely I'm shortening a little and par paraphrasing but she said, it's just hard to accept that I spent so many years being less happy than I could have been. I'm really happy now, but it would just make my heart sore if someone out there saw this and thought to herself, be strong, trust yourself, love yourself, conquer your fears, and just go after what you want. And act fast because life just isn't that long. What was I doing? <laughs> there was a way out. I just had to be brave enough to set aside the razor blades and let people in. Eight days later, my now husband, Matt and I, reconnected. And I took Pam's words very seriously. And I did the scariest thing I've ever done in my life. I let someone into my life and into my heart. He helped me so far on my road to happiness and recovery. I'll leave a link down below of the video where I share our story, how we got together and everything. 
One of the hardest things I've ever had to do was tell my best friend of so many years everything that had happened. But by far the most difficult thing was telling my parents. I ended up writing them what turned out to be a five page letter I think saying everything that had happened because I couldn't physically tell them over the phone they're six hours away. And I remember when we finally sent it and we got back to the car in the post office parking lot and I just completely broke down crying into Matt's arms saying they're gonna know they're finally gonna know and it was relief but it was also that same damaged feeling was working its way back into my heart that my parents were gonna finally know and somehow they were gonna blame me or say that I was the one that was in the wrong. Thankfully that didn't happen. Things have been tense between my parents and I not I mean it will never be the way it was um but it's things are still kind of in a gray area with them because they still live in Mitchell with my brother. They still see him all the time. They, the, he's still their son, but I'm still their daughter. So it's still kind of weird. So why am I telling you the story and why now? The timing seemed right. Um, there's been enough time of healing and pretty much all my family knows now and it was a priority that they all know the last hurdle was my brother Chris because Ryan and Chris and I have always been so close and it was gonna be so hard to tell him what Ryan had done to me and at the same time over the last few years I had just shut everyone out including Chris so it just felt like we weren't that close anymore and that still hurts to say but that's the damage that this kind of abuse will do it will kill your relationships because you just cannot be close to people I wanted to share this story for so long with you guys because you guys have no idea how much you did help me through it in your own way plus we're to a point now where I am next week I am heading back to my hometown of Mitchell, South Dakota for the first time in four years. I also have not seen Ryan in that four years. It's been made very clear that he is not to be anywhere near us in the time, the three days that I'm visiting. Because I can't personally speak for his safety if my husband and his paths ever crossed. and. Even now, the thought of seeing him face to face makes me physically ill. And this trip is not going to be easy. Every time I think about it, I start having panic attacks. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> and it's just... My husband thinks it's going to be healing for me, and I hope that that is the case. But it's going to be a very long road just to drive six hours to get there. <laughs> I also wanted to share this story because I unfortunately know that there are so many others out there with stories similar to mine in one way or the other. And I just, I want you to know that if you are in this situation, that you are not alone and there is nothing wrong with you. And you deserve... so much more happiness than this life might be giving you. I am more than happy to be there for you. Um, if I had just, if I had thought that there was someone there for me back when all this was going on, that someone would love me and understand where I was coming from, it might have been a much shorter journey to recovery. So if you guys, if you're out there right now, and you're in a situation like this, you can email me. Um, you can personal message me on Instagram or Snapchat or on my YouTube channel here. And I may not have the perfect advice you need or the right words to tell you, but 
I can be there for you. I, I feel like I just wish someone had been there for me. And I want to be there for someone. Just so I can make sure that you are not alone and that you are loved. Sorry, I had to change camera angles because my camera was dying. <laughs> I also never told anyone this, but I created a secret Tumblr account at the time when I was at my worst just to help me cope with my cutting. And so there's a little more of my story there. Um, you can feel free to check it out. Um, the Tumblr account is at the Violent Dawn. Um, I'm going to repost, I'm going, I'm going to be posting this video on that Tumblr and that will be the last post of that Tumblr. I want to thank you guys for watching. I want to thank you for being there for me throughout the years, even though you had no idea how much you were there for me. <laughs> I want to make sure that you know that if you need help, if you need someone to talk to, I'm here. And even if that's not right for you, someone is there. You need to reach out to someone. You need, I don't want to say help, but you need something something more in your life than the pain that you're dealing with and you can find it it's there you just have to be brave enough to look for it and let it heal your life thank you guys so much for watching i love you so much and i will see you later